Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to explore that through the series of 30 favorite albums. So I've done the years 2000 through 2003. And today we're going to do 2004. So it's been a while since we did this. And again, I want to stress, these are my 30 favorite albums. I'm not saying these are the 30 best albums. So I think that's an important distinction. So let's get right into it. On part one here, I'm going to do 30 through 16 counted down. And let me know what some of your choices are. So, you know, this is subjective. Uh, six months or a year from now, I'm, you know, I might reorder them. So these are tough things to do. But we're going to start off here with two of my favorite people who could do no better than 30 and 29 on the list. So the first one is someone I absolutely adore, and that's PJ Harvey with her album Maha Her. Uh, like I say, huge fan of PJ Harvey, and I like most of her albums. This one's a little tougher than some of the other ones. Um, it got, you know, it got pretty dizzy pretty decent reviews um, 4 from AMG 7.6 from Pitchfork 79 from Metacritic so yeah she did all the instruments except the drums and self produced it and and maybe that is part of the reason that I'm not as crazy about this album as some others so I give it like three and a half stars I uh, you know pushing for it's it's an album that I like but it's it's just not my absolute favorite P.J. Harvey, but aha uh -huh, her coming in at number 30. So I'm being objective here. I'm not just picking my favorite artists. Same thing with number 29. This is uh, a band I like a lot, U2, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. You know, I think um, right off the bat, a lot of people have talked about Vertigo. I personally love the song Vertigo. I really do. I think it rocks out. And I've watched some live versions of it. I think it's great. Um, this is the one album where maybe I can understand. Those of you who don't like Bono, I kind of get it a little bit when I listen to this album. There are some lyrics that are maybe a little, maybe a little pretentious. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, kind of with the PJ Harvey. I'm kind of of the same opinion that it's around uh, three and a half stars. That's what AMG gives it, All Music Guide. And, um, you know, it gets three and a half to four stars from uh, most of the critics. Coming in at number 28 is a lesser known artist. And this is probably my favorite album by him, Joseph Arthur from Akron, Ohio. He's on the Real World label, which is Peter Gabriel's label. And it raised a lot of eyebrows because that's an international music label. And yet he signed Joseph Arthur, an American. So anyway, he's a singer songwriter and these are songs about his struggle his struggles with addiction in life, and it's just a really good singer-songwriter album. I, I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, probably going up to four stars now for Joseph Arthur, Our Shadows Will Remain. Recommend this album. Another singer-songwriter coming in at number 27. And that would be uh, an artist that I like, but I don't, I don't like as much as most people do, and that's Elliot Smith. But his posthumous album, From a Basement on the Hill, I think is a real fine uh, album. So there was a lot of post-production that was done to make this happen. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of hear Elliot Smith a little bit like I do Nick Drake in, in that he has kind of that suppressed vocal delivery. Um, not a lot of oomph. You know, it's kind of um, very personal. Um, the studio is a major instrument with him. But I think he really delivers the goods on this. I realize that from A Basement on the Hill, 
is not his highest rated album. Uh, but I like it, and uh, this was pretty well received. Um, it was highly rated on Rate Your Music. Uh, Pitchfork gave it an 8.4, Metacritic 88, AMG 4.5, and, and yeah, this this to me kind of hits the spot for me with um, Elliot Smith, and I do like a couple of his albums from the 90s, but for the 21st century, this is uh, my favorite of his. I think he did two albums, I believe, in the 21st century. This is my favorite. Coming in at number 26, Elvis Costello and the Imposters, the, the Delivery Man. Um, this album kind of split people. I mean, uh, you know, it wasn't Elvis Costello and the Attractions, so some people aren't as big a fan of his other projects. But uh, I like this album quite a bit. Now, Mojo, which is a British magazine, they gave this album five stars. Yeah, incredible. Five stars. Uh, so the Brits really liked it. On Metacritic, 71. Pitchfork, 6.8. So people disagreed. It uh, did pretty well on um, some sites, not others. Uh, but there's a lot of good songs on here, and his vocals are always terrific. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's an unusual album. Uh, not not really accessible on first listen, but as you listen to the album more and more, I think the songs grow on you right uh, quite a bit. Coming at number twenty-five. Oh, I was going to say too. So. I forgot, to, I forgot to say on the introduction that I include anthologies and compilations and live albums. I include everything on here. And this was a great year for anthologies. But I only have one live album on here uh, that I can recall, uh, just one, which is David Bowie, A Reality Tour. I did not get to see this particular tour. Um, I have some friends that saw it and say it was terrific. I own the DVD and it's ter it's terrific. Um, but yeah, mostly greatest hits, but he does some deep tracks like uh, Sister Midnight, which was from an Iggy Pop album. And uh, yeah, a reality tour. It's just a really nice survey of Bowie's career. And this was the tour where he had the heart attack and had to cancel his tour. But uh, uh but in 2004, out came the uh, document of this, the CD and the DVD, and I like this uh, quite a bit. It, it, you know, it, it wasn't rated that highly because it's a live album, and live albums usually don't uh, score as highly on the uh, critics list, but I like a reality tour. Number 24 from Texas, I believe Austin, though maybe they're from Dallas, I'm not sure. I've forgotten off the top of my head, but um, Secret Machines. Now, this is not a huge band, but I own two of their CDs and I really enjoy them. In 2004, they put out Now Here Is Nowhere. Now Here Is Nowhere really good um, album. It draws a lot of influences from Krautrock. I hear a lot of the band Noi on here. Oh yeah, okay, I got it in my notes here. Dallas, Texas, okay. Um, the Guardian out of England gave this five stars. Uh, Metacritic 80. It did pretty well. I, I like it. It's, it's mostly instrumental. Uh, great Great album. I recommend Secret Machines, Now Here Is Nowhere. This is a four-star album, I'll say. 23 is my first compilation uh, from Ireland. The Best of the Boomtown Rats. This is a great little anthology. It's one disc. It's perfect. It's all the Boomtown Rats I need has uh, my favorite songs on it uh, and it covers their whole catalog and you know there's certain uh, with with them they're kind of a forgotten punk band but every album has great tracks on it 
And I don't know if they had that one album that you could knock it out of the park. But you take the best tracks from all of their albums and you get this single disc that's just so much fun. Uh, songs like Banana Republic. Love that song. So Best of the Boomtown Rats, Bob Geldof and his, his group. Uh, you know, acquired taste perhaps, but I love the Boomtown Rats. Number 22, another anthology. I'm a big Robert Wyatt fan, and this album is called His Greatest Misses, which is a uh, misnomer because, well, it, it's a joke because he never really had singles per se. Robert Wyatt, Acquired Taste. Um, this scored 85 on Rate Your Music. It's, uh, and, and it was released on Domino Records, and it covers his whole career, and it has just killer um, tracks like his version of Shipbuilding and, and uh, everything from uh, Ruth is Stranger Than Richard and Rock Bottom, his really early stuff, all the way through, I think, I want to say through Cuckoo Land. So quite a few years so he's not the most prolific artist but great great stuff Robert Wyatt has an unusual voice acquired taste but I really recommend this as an introduction to Robert Wyatt coming in number 21 underground rap MF Doom all right which album did I pick the album that everybody loves from this year is Mad Villainy with Mad Lib, and that is a good album, but for my taste, I like Mmm Food. Concept, <laughs> concept album about food. Shouldn't work, but it does. And you know, I keep, I keep playing Mad Villainy next to this one and trying to go, okay, all the critics, all the public, they seem to like Mad Villainy. That's the one I should like. But every time I play them back to back, I just have a slight preference for this one. Love Um Food. We're really getting up there now, I think, to uh, four and a half star territory. Love this one. Coming in at number 20 is a veteran, Todd Rundgren, who made so many experimental albums uh, prior to this that People like me pretty much just checked out on Todd, and then he turns around and makes this wonderful pop album. It's a concept album of sorts um, about truth. Every song is about truth, and the album is called Liars. So there you go. And uh, it's very electronic, very pop. It's got some R&B influences, and it's just Todd being Todd. Uh, great vocals, uh, a little bit of his guitar, but he relies a little bit more on the keyboards and percussion. So, Liars, and this is an album that did have to grow on me a little bit. Um, a friend gave it to me as a gift and wasn't sure what I thought about it on first listen, but over the years it's really grown on me. Number 19 is an international album, a band I've had the great pleasure to see a couple times. Tanari one from Mali, Mali in Algeria. They are a Tuareg band, uh, Saharan Berbers, and uh, it's all drums and percussion. This is their debut, I think. It's called, if I can say this right, Amaskul. M-A-A-S-S-K-O-U-L. Amaskul. And this is great. I think they would get better after this album, but right out the start, this is a good one. This is back in the days when they had some women in the band that were singing uh, background vocals, and I always enjoyed that period. Uh, but this is uh, all mid-tempo music. They don't do anything really fast or really slow. Everything's right in the middle, which is very unusual, and it's seductive. Uh, desert blues. Uh, if you ever have a chance to see Tanari one, uh, they've been touring the States a lot lately because of the Civil War in Mali. So they've been living in uh, Joshua Tree, uh, California, I believe. And um, so uh, me being from Arizona, I was able to catch them 
uh, twice. They played in the state several times. Number 18, uh, an album that was number one in the UK, Scissor Sisters, self-titled. New York City band, um, this is in the book 1001 Albums to Hear Before You Die. Uh, I love this album, very danceable, very fun, got some camp on it. Uh, it was very Elton John influenced. Uh, that almost is a detriment, but I guess if you're going to mimic somebody, that's a good one. So Scissor Sisters from New York City, just a really fun, fun album. Just the song Laura alone is so much fun. Number 17 is another uh, anthology, but this is an anthology of a little bit more modern band. It's Pearl Jam, Rearview Mirror, Greatest Hits, 91 to 2003. And, you know, I, I like the first couple albums, uh, uh, but I, I didn't really follow Pearl Jam that much. You know, I, I didn't listen to every single album as it came out. I remember really being into the first three up through Vitology. But of course they would, um, you know, it's funny if you look at their uh, critical reviews of their albums, it, it, it goes like this depending on which uh, site. So, you know, for example, if you were to graph Pitchfork and then graph, say, All Music and then graph some of the British magazines. It's all over the map. Nobody can agree on what's a good Pearl Jam album. But in listening to this, there are great cuts from their later albums. And I think the fact that this goes up through 2003 is perfect for me. Uh, I've not listened to anything by them. After 2003, they've put out another five albums maybe since then. They've been fairly prolific. But I like this sweet spot here, and it's got some extras on it, which is really nice. Um, uh, two songs from the single soundtrack, that's really nice. Uh, the only fault to the album is uh, I would have gotten rid of Last Kiss, which is not my favorite Pearl Jam song, and put on their cover of Victoria Williams' song, Crazy Mary. Um, I don't remember the exact title of that, but they're... Uh, they did a song on the Sweet Relief Benefit album, and it's killer. Take a bottle, pass it around. That song is so good, and it's not on here. And that would make the anthology perfect. But other than that, two discs. Uh, you know, it's not a perfect anthology. Brendan O'Brien remixed some tracks. I don't think that was necessary. Like I say, Last Kiss is on here. Um, and then there's a... They did that thing where they have kind of an upside and then kind of a downside, you know, fast rockers all grouped on side one, and then side two is more moody pieces. And I don't know if I'm a big fan of that, and yet every time I play this album, the track listing has a pretty good flow to it. So I like it. Coming in at number 16, which will round out part one here, is our friend... Uh, Kanye West, or whatever name he goes by now, Kanye West, the college dropout, his uh, debut album, and of course this was critically praised, and I agree, uh, Atlanta Hip Hop, um, he's described this album as No Guns, Girls, and Bling, and that works for me. Uh, it's a smart album, it's got a lot of great samples, a lot of great R&B flavor, yeah, is this my? There's two or three Kanye Kanye albums that I really like. Uh, I like my Dark Twisted Fantasy. Uh, but the College Dropout, that's as good as he gets. I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding him, but when this album dropped in 2004, it was great, and I did listen to it in 2004. That was an album that was timely and relevant to me. I remember listening to that and really really enjoying it, especially the song Jesus Walks. Oh, is that a great track? So that's it. That's my first 15. So stay tuned for part two, where I'll count down the uh, my 15 favorite. 
And uh, thanks for joining me here on the channel. So if you like what we're doing, if seen you reacting to the new music, and in this case, some anthologies of classic rock, uh, hit that like or subscribe button, you know, the bells, the notifications, you know the routine. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.